ANUG Chairman Caught in Electricity Theft Scandal Claims Political Persecution In a shocking turn of events, ANUG Chairman Kian Jabauer finds himself in the middle of a scandal, caught allegedly stealing electricity. But the story doesn't end there, he's claiming political victimization while simultaneously begging for forgiveness. Stay tuned as we break down the details of this controversial case. Welcome to today's news update. Anuk Chairman Kian Jabauer, a prominent figure in Guyana's political scene, has found himself in hot water after allegedly being caught stealing electricity from the national grid. The discovery was made by the Guyana Power and Light during a routine check at his business premises in Georgetown, where an illegal meter was found. But there's more to the story, Jabauer has since taken to Facebook to issue a public apology, while at the same time, claiming he's being politically victimized. Today, we'll dive deep into the details of this developing story. Jabauer's downfall began when personnel from the Guyana Power and Light, GPL, discovered irregularities at his business premises in Campbellville. What they found was an illegal meter, registered to an entirely different address on the East Coast, raising serious questions about fraud. Further investigations suggest that Jabauer may have tampered with the electrical apparatus at his business to aid in the illegal activity. This discovery not only shocked the public, but raised concerns about the integrity of political leaders. This isn't the first time Jabauer has found himself in the public eye for the wrong reasons. In 2022, he was accused of beating his ex-girlfriend, a case that tarnished his image. Now, with his latest scandal, Jabauer has taken to Facebook to apologize for the electricity theft. He expressed remorse for his actions, stating, I truly don't want those around me to get hurt and caught up in all I'm trying to do. But while he asks for forgiveness, his apology has been met with mixed reactions. Some see it as a sincere attempt to make amends, while others accuse him of trying to minimize his wrongdoing. Jabauer claims that his legal troubles are politically motivated, suggesting that his position as chairman of ANUG has made him a target. In his Facebook post, he hinted that the electricity theft charges are part of a larger scheme to discredit him. However, this claim has sparked a debate. Is Jabauer a victim of political persecution, or is he simply trying to deflect blame for his own actions? Public opinion is divided, with some sympathizing with his claims, while others feel that he should be held accountable like anyone else. During his weekly press conference, Vice President Dr. Barat Jagdio addressed the situation, making it clear that the government will not show leniency toward those involved in illegal activities. Dr. Jagdio stated, if you're stealing electricity and you get caught, you should face the consequences. Why should it be different for a politician? Today, we dive into yet another high-profile fraud case right here in Georgetown. A 56-year-old man, Gopal Tawari, is in the hot seat, accused of a $6.4 million land fraud scheme that has left many questioning the limits of trust. But this isn't the first time Tawari has found himself in the courtroom. So, what exactly happened, and why does this case stand out? Let's take a closer look. In this video, We'll break down the details of how to worry allegedly deceived a man out of millions, the shocking courtroom revelations, and the decision to grant him bail despite a concerning past. Stay tuned because this is a story with many twists and turns. The alleged fraud began between May 8th and May 13th, 2024, when Tawara reportedly convinced Theodore Craig to buy a plot of land that he falsely claimed ownership of. Craig, Trusting Tawara due to their previous working relationship, began making weekly payments of $1,000 US dollars. However, as the deal progressed, Craig discovered that the land was never Tawari's to sell. Armed with documentation and transaction records, Craig took the matter to court, 
accusing Tewari of obtaining money under false pretenses. Tewari, however, denied the charges, claiming innocence in the deal. Despite this, the prosecution was quick to highlight the similarities between this case and Tewari's previous legal troubles, painting a picture of a man with a history of deceit. Jagdeo defends PPP against opposition's claims after drug bust controversy. Today's top story revolves around a heated controversy that has sparked a political storm. The political opposition has been making noise after a drug bust at the home of social media activist Melissa Atwell's mother, Debbie Atwell. This has led to claims of political victimization, with Atwell herself and opposition parties speaking out loudly against the government. But Vice President Bharat Jagdeo isn't staying silent either. In a bold response, Jagdeo has defended the PPP and the government, stating that the People's Progressive Party is unaffected by the criticism coming from social media commentators. So, what really happened? And how is the PPP addressing these claims? Let's break it down. On Tuesday last, a team of police officers arrived at Lot 86 BB Eccles, the residence of Debbie Atwell, to conduct a search for narcotics. The search was part of an ongoing investigation, and during the search of the yard and surrounding areas, officers discovered a suspicious black plastic bag in an alleyway beyond the back concrete fence. Inside the bag, police found a transparent Ziploc bag containing what appeared to be cannabis, which later weighed 27 grams. The discovery of the drugs outside the home has led to heated debates, with political opposition claiming this as a blatant case of political victimization. Supporters of social media activist Melissa Atwell, known as Mel Lee Mel, have rallied behind her, alleging that the bust was orchestrated to silence her criticism of the government. In response to the opposition's accusations, Vice President Bharat Jagdeo addressed the issue head-on during a press conference. He dismissed the idea that the government had any involvement in framing Atwell or her family. Jagdeo pointed out that if this were an organized plot to target her, the drugs would have been found in a more incriminating location, not tossed over a fence into an alleyway next to banana trees. Jagdeo's argument highlights the illogical nature of the opposition's claims. According to him, the opposition's reaction is an attempt to stir up political tension, but the PPP remains focused on its duties and accomplishments. He confidently stated that the party's track record, built on tangible results and policies that benefit the people, speaks for itself. Social media criticism, he noted, does not pose a significant threat to the PPP. Jagdeo also emphasized the PPP's commitment to free speech and civil liberties, saying that the party welcomes criticism and open dialogue. However, he reminded the public that the focus must remain on the real issues that matter, improving the lives of Guyanese citizens. The PPP, according to Jagdeo, has been hard at work delivering on promises made to the people, and their ground support reflects the party's dedication. The vice president made it clear that the PPP is not swayed by social media rantings or opposition strategies aimed at undermining the government's work.